when you do marketing, you don't always have to have a call to action. You don't always have to have an agenda to get your audience to do something, to comment, to share, to like, to sign up for your newsletter, to buy your thing, to buy even more, to refer people. These agenda items from marketers are what so many of us have become used to for what marketing is supposed to be. And so that's what we think we should do with our audience too, but it doesn't have to be that way. What I'm gonna encourage you to do is to hold loosely to some agenda for what you want your audience to do. I know this is very different than the kind of business teaching you're gonna hear in most places. Most, most business teaching is about focus on profit before focusing on profit, focus on audience engagement, and then focus on building your email list and then focus on moving them through a sales funnel to buy the low cost thing and then the middle cost thing and the high cost thing and then refer you. There's always an agenda behind what marketing is. And that's why so many of us don't like marketing. That's why I often get asked the question, George, can I just please do my work, do the work that I would love to do and just have people find me and I don't have to do marketing what does it mean when they say, I don't have to do marketing? It means I don't want to have an agenda with people all the time. I don't always want to pretend that I'm trying to help them when I'm just trying to sell them. So let that go. You don't have to try to get people. I don't have to try to get you to do anything. You know what I need to do? I need to embody my deepest values today and show up. I need to show up. That's important too. But more importantly, I need to embody my deeper values when I show up. So what are your deeper values? If you were to boil it down to one, what might it be? That might be easier for you to think. What's one word that embodies how you want to act in your business? You can imagine what that one word for me might be. Authenticity. Yeah, could also be service. Maybe even could I aspire to love being that one word? If we clarify our deeper values and then focus and prioritize our marketing, marketing actions on embodying those deeper values, showing up to our audience with that, it is such a different flavor. The audience will say, this person is so different. This person isn't always trying to get me to do stuff, but this person is showing up from a place of fill in your deeper value. And naturally, they will be curious. Huh, wow, this feels great. Who is this person? They will naturally be curious. They will naturally look into what you do. And, and if you can help them, they will inquire with you. How do you get clients, George, when you hold loosely to an agenda? How do you get clients consistently when you don't try to control people, George? When you don't try to manipulate people, how can you still get clients, enough clients? Let me tell you how. When you work on embodying the deep values and you show up frequently enough, okay, what's going to happen? And you show up uh, frequently enough. And, you know, of course, as you may have watched my other videos, you know, I love talking about content, the importance of authentic content. That's how we show up online. How do you show up online? Well, you show up on video or you show up on, in writing or you show up with images or you show up with audio on a podcast. You show up right? You show up as yourself, okay, with your deeper values, and you try to, to help other people. You, it, whether, by the way, you don't even have to try to help. You just show up with what is alive for you, genuinely alive for you. And yes, the other, you know, besides showing up, I think the other thing that's important is 
to get to know the people who are showing up for you as well. Your audience who are showing up, you get to know them, embody your deeper values in, in, in the interactions with them, okay? Get to know them and you'll naturally build that, with that understanding of them into your content. It just, it's a natural thing. If I get to know you better, I'm gonna think of you when I talk, of course I am. I'm gonna think of you when I write. So you have to get to know people, your people in your audience. The better you know them, the more naturally who they are shows up in your content, what they need, what they want, what they resonate with, that's gonna show up in your content. And if you show up with your deeper values, okay, it's probably somewhere along the lines of service or love or something, or you know, what feel free to comment if you want to add what what that what that one word for you might be. Um, then people will be curious and people will look into what you do and people will inquire about what you do. It really is like that. That's it. You don't, you know, I think most business teaching is, is of course, very left brain and the left brain thinks goes like this. Set a goal for how much profit you want. Okay, I want this much profit in my business and therefore let's work and I want this much profit by this, this time. Who cares about divine timing, right? I want the egoic timing of my business reaching a certain profit line at a certain time. Do you realize that most business training is completely egoic, ego-centered? And that's why so many of us who are truly heart-based, who want to live by spirit, something is not right with this. What? what well, that's why if you set, say, I want to reach six figures, whatever, by 2020, that's not divine timing. That's your left brain timing. That's your own ego. Now, that's, even that's okay if, if you truly have enough experience to know that that's, that's, a, that's a realistic and, and, and true uh, timing. Because divine timing, eventually, you'll notice what the divine timing is, and then you can use your left brain ego to create your plans around divine timing. But so what so many of us do is we're just making up numbers and timelines. I want to reach, based on our own egoic law of attraction, you know, you know I want this. Well, you want that. It's kind of like, you know, a kid says, I want all the cookies I want, you know. And the parent says, no, you can't have the cookies right now. You can have one after dinner. Fine. You can have all, everything. And then when you become an adult, then you can choose to have as many cookies as you want. But right now, you're still a kid in your business, if, if that's the case, you know, unless you have a mature business. And so the market, the universe, God, say, no, you can't have six figures by 2020 or whatever. You're, I mean, maybe you can. But let me, God says, let me do the timing. You you need to seek first the kingdom of God and all else shall be given to you, right? That's, that's your, that's, that needs to be your focus. Seek first the kingdom of God. And I'm going to, I'm going to re I'm going to interpret that. Uh, if you allow me in business as saying, embody our deeper values, our deepest values today. Seek to embody our deepest values today and let the visible results be taken care of rather than judging yourself to say, well, I didn't meet my numbers goal this month, this week, this, well, uh, we, we should be, be disciplined and, and, and try to meet our actions every week, every day. We try to say, well, I plan to do this. So I'm going to do it. But, but, but to, but to hold loosely to what the visible results are. I did this today. I'm not going to say, well, I did this, so therefore I should get three clients. Unless I have a real historical example of, yes, whenever I do this, I get three clients. That's the historical example. That's divine timing. The, the, the universe has shown me that when I, not, not when George does this or not when another expert does this, when I do this, I get three clients. History has shown. Then I can say, well, then I can reasonably expect if I do this, I'll get three clients. But to just come out of the fantasy and say six figures by 2020 or whatever it is, it's like, where are you getting this? From somebody else's metric? You know, it doesn't make sense. 
and you stress yourself out and you become inauthentic when you take fant fantastical numbers and timelines and say, well, that's what I'm supposed to do. No, you're not. What we're supposed to do is to come back to who we truly are and to show up with our higher self today. That's what we're supposed to do. That's it. And what does that mean for you? What does that mean for you? And then watch as we serve our people more and better, watch what the results are, and then we can plan future results based on actual visible results that do show up, not because we're controlling them, but because they organically show up by being our best selves. So how do I control for my revenue? Can I, can I have a predictable revenue? Of course I can. I have a very predictable revenue in my business, but I don't set random and fantastical numbers and timelines. I look at historical results based on disciplined action. I take disciplined action every day in my business. Otherwise, I wouldn't be here right now. As, I've, as you may have heard me say before, I don't know if you know this, but I never feel like doing these videos. Yeah. I don't feel like showing up. I, before I started doing this video, I didn't feel like doing it. I could have done lots of other more comfortable things. But I disciplined myself to start recording. And once I start recording and talking, then I feel like doing it. After a little while, after sometimes it takes a little while, but now I feel like doing it. Now I'm, I'm having a good time with you showing up here. Disciplined action doing our best to embody our, our, our higher or deeper selves or truer selves and then watching and of course with the strategy of serving our people the best that we can means getting to know them so that we can naturally serve them better and then over time you'll notice what the results are and then you can plan around those results so if you're launching your first online course oh i'm going to have this many participants by this date I mean, yeah, sure, you can have those fantasies, but to peg your success or failure based on a fantastical number and timeline doesn't make sense. Even left brain, it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. And that, but yet so many people blame themselves. I say, well, I launched my course and only got one sale. Well, have you ever launched your course before? No, I haven't. So how did you know you were going to get 100 sales or 30 sales or 20? I, I just, I guess I guessed. Or someone told me that I'm supposed to get this many. No, you're not. You're, you're just, you need to show up in a disciplined way with your best self, if possible, whenever possible, in service to people to try to benefit their life and then watch the organic results and then plan around that. So anyway, I think, I think I've said enough here. And uh, I want to thank those who are showing up and, um, and uh, here live, Miriam and Diane. Thank you, Wendy, Raya, Tucker, and Shweta, um, Sharon, uh, Tina, Tord, Linda, Ruth. Thank you so much. Um, so let's see, I'm just calling out uh, one of the comments here. Shweta says, regarding specific goals from an Ayurvedic yogic perspective, depending on one's current body-mind constitution, I feel setting specific goals are more helpful than others and more airspace elements dominate a person who has a visionary tendency and they feel more grounding for such types. Yes, overall, I agree. Divine timing, surrender and trust, divine is key. Yeah, it's, it's you know, setting specific goals are, are good if they help you take disciplined action. But just like the Bhagavad Gita says, to action alone do you have the right but not to its fruits, right? <laughs> Never to its fruits. You don't have a right to determine what the fruits of your action are. You have a right to determine what your actions are and whether you take them in a disciplined way, right? Let the fruit of your actions appear. Now you can set goals for your fruits uh, to inspire you towards action, but to say the fruits didn't appear, therefore God doesn't like me, or therefore I'm a bad person, or therefore uh, this is not meant for me is, is nonsense. Um, well, it's, it makes sense, people do this in the mainstream world, but it, it doesn't make sense from a deeper perspective, from a more holistic perspective. Trust by taking disciplined, deeper action and watch what happens. So I wish you well, thank you for joining me here. And um, 
Until the next video, I wish you joyful, disciplined action based on your deeper self. And when I say deeper self, I don't mean it, you know, disciplined action doesn't have to look like this. It doesn't have to be suffering. No. When I discipline action, for me, I didn't feel like doing this video, right? But I click record in a, in a moment of excitement, in a moment of curiosity. I, I do it anyway, no matter what. So discipline action doesn't have to be suffering. It can be excitement, curiosity. It can be playfulness, but it's showing up no matter what. It's showing up no matter what. So the no matter what can be done out of struggle and fear and anxiety and stress, or it can be done out of curiosity and excitement and like, ooh, no matter what, I'm gonna do it. Let's see what happens. Right? It can be done from, from a more playful place. It can be done from a, a place of exploration and like, ooh, I wonder what's going to happen if I show up today just as I am, just as I am, the best that I can. Uh, all right. So be well and see you in the next video. Uh, take care.